Hello everyone and welcome back to PM Studios C Sharp Programming Tutorials. Today we are going over tutorial number 9, which will be classes and method encapsulation. Uh, we haven't gone over either of these in any of the previous tutorial series that I've created, so go ahead and sit down and get ready to listen because today we're going over some genuinely new content. Uh, so as you can see, I've already imported all of the code um, from last tutorial's program. The reason why last tutorial's program took so long is because we are actually going to make this extremely complicated program just a little more complicated. Actually, um, once you get used to, uh, to this type of programming, which includes classes instead of just having all of your methods in one file, um, you'll find that it's a lot more user-friendly for the programmer and it's a lot more user-friendly for the user. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go in here into the Solution Explorer, which is an area we haven't been into very much um, or at all, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and right-click on our solution name. Mine is Classes Practice 1, and yours can be whatever you had named it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and right click on it and we're going to go to add and then class. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it up to you guys whether or not you want to learn the shortcut keys but if you do um, the shortcut key to create a new class and the shortcut key to encapsulate methods which is what we'll be going over here very shortly are two things that I strongly recommend because it will make your life so much easier. So once we go ahead and go into the uh, create new class we're going to go ahead and rename it to whatever we want. We're going to want to create two new classes, one called Permute. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the shortcut keys, Alt-Shift-C. And we're going to create another one. We want to call this Combine. So basically what we've done is we've created two classes. Each one is named after a specific uh, method that we had in here before. We have the Combine method right here and we have the permute method right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate these two methods from here, make it a little more user friendly so they can't tamper with the data after it's been entered, and all of the uh, equations will be processed without any hampering uh, later down the line, so on and so forth. We're also going to be streamlining this class so that it's not so many lines, which is an important thing when you're programming as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the permute class real quick. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a private int. We're going to create two of them, actually. One is going to be t units, and the next is going to be g units. Now, these may look familiar to you, and the reason is is because those are right up here in this declaration. These are not going to be going anywhere. Uh, we just need to create them in here so there's some place for them to be referenced to. Uh, the reason why I'm making them private here is because we do not want the users altering the information. Setting, an, um, setting a variable or a class or a method to private means that nothing outside of whatever is set to private can access them. So only things inside this class, which is the file, can access these private integers, uh, which makes it a lot easier for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on the uh, click on the variable name, I'm going to right click on it and go to refactor and then encapsulate field. Now as you can tell the shortcut key there is control R E and that's not you push control R and E together, you push control R then you press E and it will encapsulate the field. So I'm going to go ahead and do the right click way for the first one and as you can see it will automatically create the property name we do not want to tamper with this unless you have some funky name for your uh, for your item and the property name looks funky itself. So you're just going to push OK and then apply. And the same thing with this guy, go ahead and click on it and then Control R, E, and that will bring that up. Go ahead and push OK and apply. And as you can see we have our two variables. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to create a, um, a encapsulated method for one that we did not bring in and I will explain why. We're going to want to create public int solution and make sure that's a capital S and we're just going to go ahead and tab that in. We're going to only add a set value to this one and we're going to go return solution for now. Um, we don't want to do anything else and that's going to come up with an error for right now. Don't worry about it. Uh, we will fix that a little bit later down the line. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is create another method, public, 
I'm going to do it says int, public int, calculate. You can certainly call it whatever you want. And A, and B. All right, and in here we want to go ahead and set one integer, call it solution, and set it equal to one, and then return two times and enter return solution. And that will get rid of the issue with this uh, method returning anything. And then we can come back up here and alter our return statement to return calculate. And we want t units, g units. And that in turn will solve our issue. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back into the program class. Um, please bear with me, I know there's a lot of jumping back and forth. And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy everything inside the permute method all the way down to the very bottom. So right before the combine, do not capture either of the, uh, the, bra the braces because we don't need those. And we're just going to highlight this, paste it, and that should call that should solve that issue right there. Now let's go ahead and address this issue. Okay, and the reason why we're having this issue right here is because I put that as a set. We actually want to set it as a get because we want the outside classes to be able to retrieve this value, not set this value. Um, that's why it was causing an issue because it's trying to set a return value, which is physically impossible. So once we have that all figured out, we can go ahead and save this. This class is officially done. So as you can see, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, um, one of the things that one of my instructors many years ago told me, and it's a very useful tool, is that a class is a blueprint of an object. And then an object is a instance of a class. So please keep that in mind as we move forward. We're going to make the combine method now, and then we're going to go ahead and alter the program text. So the same thing with the combine, all we have to do is we have to select everything down to the closing brackets for the public calculate method. And we're just gonna copy that, go into the combine. Oops. Return once, tab it out, and then we're, there we go. Now all we have to do is go into the program and then copy the combine method from in here. Again, we're gonna start at the end, int and end at the return. We are not gonna get the braces go back into the combine and replace whatever is inside calculate with whatever we had just copied. And that solves our issues for right there. Um, again, we have this set up and the way we have it set up is that we don't have to alter any other text other than that. So now that we have our two classes, we have two separate blueprints for two separate objects that we can create. Now an object is a referable instance of a class that allows, that has all the same methods, attributes, and properties as the class itself. So any instance of this that we make, any object, uh, will have these variables right here. It will have these encapsulated methods, and it will have this method for calculate right here. Um, and it will all be referable and much easier to work with. So let's go back into the program class, and with that in mind, let's create two separate instances, or two separate uh, objects, rather. One's going to be permute. So this is how you declare an object. P equals new permute. So right here we've declared an object that references back to the permute class. We've made an instance of the class and we've called it P. We're going to do the same thing with combine. C equals new combine. And now we have our two objects that we can reference back and we can function with them relatively easy. So let's go ahead and jump in here into our operators. And we're going to go G units, da 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 da. And we're going to set this so that once it's finished, we're going to set it up so that we have P dot G units equals G units. So what we're doing is we're assigning, if we jump back to the permute class, we are calling the set method for gunits, and we're saying gunits equals value, 
So in here we're saying the G units equals G units. The G units is the value. So that's pretty self-explanatory. C dot G units equals G units. Oops, I forgot my semicolon. And then the same thing for T units. Equals T units. And C dot T units. Oops. Alrighty, so now we have all of our variables assigned, which will function better for us when we come down to here, which is we're going to go ahead and set that solution equal to p dot solution. And then right here, we're gonna do the same thing, c dot solution. And that should solve our issues. So we're going to go ahead and run it really fast. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Hit the F5. There we go. I'm going to bring this in. As you can see, it starts up just the same way as we did earlier. So let's go ahead and put 15 as the total and 5 as the combinations and we want to set this as P and as you see it returns the exact same numbers as it should um, only this time it's much more compartmentalized and even though you can't tell there is a few milliseconds of speed enhancement which is always what we're striving for when we get to larger programs um, that speed enhancement would be much more noticeable as opposed to if we had everything in one class because um, the program doesn't, the uh, the program doesn't have to rifle through, uh, say, thirty thousand lines of code in one one class to find what it's looking for. It can just go, okay, there's a reference here to this method, this class that has twenty lines of code. I can run through those and return the answer. So, this is an overall much more streamlined and much more effective way of object-oriented programming, and it introduces objects, which is the namesake of the programming style. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please stay tuned because our next couple tutorials are going to be going over user interfaces. Uh, we are going to be making our first Windows application programs. So please stay tuned for that. We are going to be uh, converting this program that we finished here into um, an obviously an application program. So I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good day.